Men, if you have any issues related to erectile dysfunction, bodily dysfunction, or sexual function, including the following. Issues getting an erection. Maintaining an erection. Issues getting an orgasm or flaccid erections. Then it's likely that you have an issue related to a weak pelvic floor or an underactive pelvic floor. In this video, Lance is going to guide me through the exact 10 minute workout that he does with his patients at his clinic in Atlanta. Lance is a physical therapist and a pelvic floor specialist, so he really knows what he's talking about. And uh, I'm going to let him do the talking, and we'll show you what those exercises look like right now. First up, we're going to go through general pelvic floor mobility paired with our breath work. Breath work and pelvic floor mobility go hand in hand. And so first up, I always tell patients, we're gonna start in a comfortable position where you feel like you can completely relax, whether that's on the floor or in your bed. You're gonna be with knees up towards the ceiling. And first, I always start out with just going over the breath work. So what we call diaphragmatic breathing. So you're gonna think about breathing in through your abdomen as if you're as if your, I always tell patients, smell the roses and blow out the candles. So you're gonna take a big breath in through your nose, you're gonna inflate through the ribs, breathe all the way into your abdomen, like you're breathing air down into your pelvis, and then you're gonna exhale like you're blowing through a straw, slow, sustained breath out. Good, let's do another breath in, big breath in, expand through the ribs. Exhale, gentle breath out through the mouth. So that's part one, diaphragmatic breathing. Now, with pelvic floor mobility, to make sure that we're isolating the right muscles, I always tell patients we're gonna start with a contraction or what most people know of as a Kegel. So with this, we're gonna pause the breath work for a second. And to isolate the pelvic floor specifically, you're gonna think about contracting the, pelvic, or the muscles as if you are trying to stop the flow of urine or as if you're trying to tighten the sphincter so that you're preventing the escape of gas. So, I want you to try to do one of those contractions, Dean, do a contraction like you're trying to squeeze, stop the flow of urine, trying to lift up the testicles up off the floor, and then just let that relax. Good, you might feel an abdominal contraction with this, but the important thing to remember is not to compensate with squeezing the inner thighs, squeezing the abdominal wall too hard, or squeezing the glutes. With this, I want you to think about it as if you're sitting on a bike seat. Those are the only muscles that I want to be contracting. So let's go through that contraction again. You're gonna think about squeezing, trying to draw the testicles up and in, and then now you're gonna let that relax. And so now we're gonna go through the exact opposite of that, or what I call a pelvic drop, or a pelvic floor lengthening. So with this, you're thinking of the external anal sphincter as a mouth yawning, or a flower blooming, or a jellyfish kind of billowing out. You're trying to generate pressure in the pelvis so that you're expanding the tissues out. So with this, it's sometimes it's easier for people to feel this expansion whenever I have them start in a Kegel or a contraction. So I'm gonna have you squeeze, try to draw everything up and in. Now, let that contraction go and try to do a gentle push, try to drop it down further to, do, to lengthen or widen the sit bones. Good, and now squeeze, try to pull up and in. Try to draw the penis up and in, and then let that go. Try to gently expand Try to gently bulge, widen the sit bones like you're trying to pass gas. Good. Okay. So that's pelvic floor specific mobility, that contract, relax. Now we're going to pair that with the breath. And this is really important that we get the two to sync up. So with this, on the inhale, when, pe when, when we inhale, the diaphragm should drop down and the pelvic floor should lengthen and expand with it. And when we exhale, the diaphragm rises and the pelvic floor should gently pull up and in. So we're gonna try to make this mechanism, reinforce this mechanism. So you're gonna take a big breath in, try to widen the rib cage, expand like you're expanding an umbrella, gently bulge the pelvic floor, try to widen and expand, and then exhale. You're gonna squeeze and draw the pelvic floor up and in like you're trying to stop the flow of urine or stop yourself from farting, good. Now inhale, let all of that tension go. Try to gently expand the pelvic floor, gently bulge or widen, and then exhale. Try to squeeze, pull the pelvic floor up and in. Good. So this is totally different from if you have an overactive pelvic floor. Right, so with somebody with an underactive pelvic floor that has the symptoms that we were talking about before, 
we're trying to strengthen the pelvic floor and get things working in tandem with our breath work. With somebody with an overactive pelvic floor, those people were just trying to relax the tissue. I'm not so concerned about getting this, the muscles strengthened at this point. We're working, more working on flexibility with those people. So let's move into the next exercise. The next one is in this exact same position. It's another pelvic floor specific exercise, what I call pelvic floor endurance holds. So with this, we're gonna, it's the same breath work and it's the same pelvic floor mobility, but on the exhale and the contraction, you're gonna contract and squeeze and hold for as long as you can. The goal is to shoot for around 10 seconds. So let's go through this together. You're gonna inhale, just like we have been doing, expand through the pelvic floor with the inhale, and then exhale, you're gonna squeeze, try to pull the pelvic floor up and in, try to make your penis jump or lift the testicles and hold that contraction for as long as you can. Let's count together, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And if you don't feel like you can hold that your breath for that long or maintain that contraction, that's okay. We're really just trying to work on the endurance of the muscles and holding that contraction for as long as you can. If you feel like you have to give out before 10 seconds, that's completely fine. Just stop when you need to and start over again. So let's go through that again. Let's do one more of these. So you're gonna inhale, expand through the rib cage, expand through the abdomen, gently bulge through the pelvic floor, and then exhale, try to squeeze, pull the pelvic floor up and in, like you're stopping the flow of urine. Let's hold that contraction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Yeah, and that's like that's hard for me to do. So you know, keep in mind that one common cause of an underactive pelvic floor is just an overall lower baseline of physical fitness. So I'm struggling with this a little bit. So if you're struggling with it, I think that's pretty normal. Yeah, we're just trying to improve your baseline and just get general strengthening into the tissues. Okay, next up, let's we'll move into a, a bridge exercise. This is one, a common one that I give to patients. So with a bridge, just like you, most of you know, lifting your hips up towards the ceiling, we're gonna incorporate breath work and pelvic floor mobility into this as well, just like the last two. So you're gonna take a big breath in, inhale through the ribs. This time you're gonna exhale, squeeze the pelvic floor and squeeze through the glutes to lift your hips up off the ground, good. And then you're gonna inhale, lower your hips down, relax the pelvic floor, gently expand. Good, exhale, squeeze the pelvic floor, pull up and in, squeeze through the glutes. Let's do one more. Inhale down, and exhale up, squeeze, pull the pelvic floor up and in. Good. So if people have issues engaging their glutes, it's a common problem that I hear, what would you tell them? With this exercise, the important component is really the pelvic floor mobility. And so if you're having a hard time feeling your glutes fire, I would say just focus on the pelvic floor contraction and just focus on lifting your hips up. We're just trying to get full body movement with pelvic floor integration. Cool. Yeah. Good tip. And then if you guys really do want to do better glute engagement, try doing it just outside of this workout and try doing it with one leg. And usually that should help with isolating and getting that glute to turn on. Guys, if you're looking for more ways to build strength, I've got an awesome free seven-day beginner's yoga for men challenge. Core strength, hip strength, all of that stuff is in there. When the video is done, click the link in the description below and you can sign up for free. So next up, we're going to get off the ground a little bit and we're going to do some squats. So I'll have Dean hop up. And with this... You know, general fitness is important, and if you, squats aren't something that's are part of your routine, depth doesn't really matter. We're just trying to get full body movement with pelvic floor integration. So with a squat, you want your feet to be a little wider than your hips or whatever is a comfortable stance, and it's the same breath work that we have been doing. So you're gonna drop down into a squat, inhale as you drop down, but then exhale, you're gonna think about squeezing the pelvic floor and trying to draw everything up and in as you stand up. So good, you're gonna inhale down, set the butt back, exhale, squeeze, pull everything up and in in the pelvic floor. Let's do one more, inhale down, good, exhale, stand back up, good. Cool. 10 reps of these, just like the last couple exercises, we'll do 10 of these combined with the breath work at least once a day, that's the goal. 
And like Lance said, if you struggle with mobility in squat, you can start off kind of like I was doing it, where your knees don't do come too far forward, and you work on your hips getting further back. And then with time, you might be able to get your knees further forward with your heels down and your butt closer to the ground. But um, focus on a depth that you can manage with good form. Don't worry about getting as low as you can yet. So next up, we're going to do a wide-legged squat or a sumo squat. So with this, you're going to be in a wide stance. Your feet are going to be rotated out a little bit. And with this, again, same breath work pattern as we have been doing. We're targeting the inner thighs and the hips and the glutes and the pelvic floor. So you're going to inhale down just like Dean did, and then exhale, squeeze, pull the pelvic floor up and in. Inhale down, exhale, squeeze, pull up and in. Good. And again, just like the last exercise, depth doesn't really matter. The deeper you go, the more of a, the stretch and uh, the more work you're going to get. But if you're just getting into this as a fitness routine, go to wherever's comfortable. Good. Same thing, 10 reps of those, just like all the other exercises once a day, every day. Good. So how often and how many times should we do this per week and how long will it take to we notice if it's working or not? So I would generally recommend at least once a day, ideally twice a day for the first couple of weeks. Doing this program for the, next, for the first six to eight weeks is generally when we start to see the full results of all the work that you've been doing. Got it. So what are some things to expect as we're going through this repetition? Like is soreness normal or like what else? So if general fitness isn't a part or exercise isn't a part of your daily life or routine, you might be a little sore after doing some of these exercises. We're using some muscles that you might not be using on a regular basis. And so moving them in a different way might cause some soreness. And who's going to benefit the most? What age groups or what types of people are going to benefit the most from this type of exercise? People who aren't super into fitness or who don't exercise regularly are definitely going to benefit the most from this, but also the older age range that might just have some general overall weakness that just need a little bit more strengthening to the pelvic floor specifically would also benefit from this. Yeah, I think those are really good points. So if you have struggled or you just haven't made fitness a priority, following along to a workout like this makes it really easy. You don't have as much motivation required. You don't have to worry about people looking at you. Just press play and do your best. And then if you're older, Muscle mass declines significantly as we age. You might not have had to do any strength work before, but if you're getting older, 50s, 60s, 70s, you might have to start training, um, and this is a good way to do that. Yeah, Dean, all the work that you're doing at Manflow Yoga is great for people in this demographic that need a little bit more pelvic strengthening. I actually use a lot of the stuff that you already work, with, work on with your guys in my actual practice in, in Atlanta, so keep up the good work. Cool. Thank you. All right, guys. So if you watched this video and enjoyed it, bookmark it. Do it again. Add it to your favorites. Uh, make sure you do it consistently. Again, if you can do it once or twice per day, how long should we do it for? Or how, how, many, how long until we expect results? You should notice results in the first couple of weeks. But within the first six to eight weeks, you should definitely see some kind of improvement with your symptoms. Cool. All right, guys. So keep doing the workout. Um, like this video if you found it helpful. If you want to see more from Lance and I. Leave a comment. Let me know. Give me some feedback. Subscribe. Don't miss out on future videos. We've got other videos in this pelvic floor series to help you out. And if you don't already follow Lance, go check out his stuff, Pelvic Floor Specialist. You can find me on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, at Lance in Your Pants, or you can check out my website at flexptatl.com. Sweet. All right, guys. If you're looking for an overview on pelvic floor dysfunction for men, we made a video for that. Click over here, watch it. It'll be really helpful, give you some really helpful information. We'll look forward to seeing you on that video, and thanks for watching.